campfire nachos. This one's super easy and it's perfect if you're trying to cook for a large group of mates when you're camping. All you need is a Dutch oven, um, a good campfire, and you're on. Now, the one thing I love about this dish is that it's really great for using up any meat that you've got left over from the night before. So if you've got some pulled pork from the night before, you can use that up instead of beef mince like I'm using today. You can also change it out for chicken mince or turkey mince or whatever you've got, or black beans if you don't want to eat meat. Let's get into it. So for this you're going to need, you're going to need some protein. So I'm using beef mince here, but like I was saying, you can use uh, pork mince, chicken mince, black beans, leftover pulled pork, whatever you've got. Um, we're going to flavor that with an onion um, and some taco spice. So I've made my own here, um, just cumin, coriander, uh, Mexican oregano, smoked paprika, um, some tomato, some avocado for the top, sour cream, some salsa. Don't be afraid to make your own, but hey, we're camping, so I just bought some from the shop. Uh, some olive oil and of course some corn chips and the only thing that you're really going to need as far as equipment is a good Dutch oven and I've even got a piece of sausage here that I had left over from some pizzas that we're going to shove in there so let's get cracking and because I'm a peanut and it was in my fridge still I forgot to talk about the cheese when I was talking about the ingredients before so don't forget you need cheese um, I'm using mozzarella here I've also got some grated cheddar in the fridge if I don't have quite enough so first cab off the rank and we need to get our ingredients ready for our beef mince. So like I was saying, I had this piece of pepperoni in my fridge that I wanted to use up. Uh, and then I'm also going to dice up one onion, um, just all about the same size, but it doesn't need to be perfect. So another fantastic thing about this dish is it's a bit of a one pot wonder. And if you don't mind being a bit of a grub, you don't even really need a knife and fork to eat it. So once you've got your oil nice and hot and goes your diced onion uh, and your sausage, if you're using sausage, and you're going to get a bit of salt in there and saute that until your onion's nice and brown. So once your onion's nice and brown, you're going to chuck in your beef or your mince, whatever you're using, and you're just going to break that up to brown it off nicely. Um, in with a bit more salt and your taco seasoning, uh, and then you want to start getting some colour on that beef. So once you've got your taco seasoning and your salt in there, um, give it a good mix around to make sure it's incorporated and then I like to do this trick where I kind of press it all back into the pan um, which you'll see me do here in a second uh, and then you just let it sit there for you know, a good five to six minutes to, to get a good crust on the bottom before you start moving it around again so you can see here I'm kind of just leveling it out and pressing it into the bottom of the Dutch oven um, and what that's going to do is get a nice browning like this once you mix it again in about five minutes. All right, so let's get the garnish ready while that's finishing cooking. So we're just gonna dice up these tomatoes here. Um, nothing too crazy, just a nice chunky dice. Now that we've got our tomatoes all sorted, we'll, our beef will be ready to take off. Um, we're gonna take that off and just let it rest for a second before pulling it out of the pan and setting it aside. Uh, once your, your meat's out of your pan, I, I like to just clean the bottom of the pan out with a paper towel, saves you washing it up, and then we start the layering process. So now we're ready to start assembling, and this layering process I think is really key to making this dish um, eat a lot better. Um, so start with a layer of your corn chips on the bottom of your Dutch oven. Uh, make sure they're nice and even and um, covering the whole bottom. Next up, you're gonna put on half of your meat that you've cooked. Um, nice and evenly, followed by some tomatoes, uh, and then the cheese, so the first layer of cheese. After you've completed those three pieces, you're going to repeat that whole layering step again. And you can do this two or three times, depending on how many people you're feeding. So finally, the last layer of cheese, and then it's just some more grated on the top, which just kind of has really good coverage. All right, so the trick with this is you want most of your heat from coming from the top. So even though this fire doesn't look particularly exciting, it's actually raging hot. And I kind of don't go camping these days without taking some charcoal with me, which some people say is cheating, but I say it's smart. Because <laughs> you can just control your temperature so much better. So, We'll leave those on there for 25, 30 minutes, check if the, uh, the cheese is melted, and then we'll get the gang around and have a feed.
Oh, a little bit longer, I reckon. Oh, look at that. Well, that's one uh, cheesy looking feed. Uh, anyway, let's garnish this. The crew's hovering around pretty hungry, so better hurry up. So we've got some avocado. I'm gonna dice it up. It's nice and ripe. A little bit of salsa. Can't have nachos without sour cream. And a little bit of basil. Coriander also works well. But I had basil, so. All right, let's get this to the crew. There's some nachos, gang. Thanks, Chef. Thanks, Chef. Holy what? <laughs> Campfire nachos, make sure you make this one next time you're out camping. Uh, as you can see, the crew seems to really enjoy it. Uh, please chuck me a like on this video if you enjoyed it. It helps me out heaps. And if subscribe if you're not, and chuck the little bell. Chuck the little bell. And chuck the little bell icon. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Peace.